So here's the other modem I picked up at the garage sale. It's from a telecommunications provider here in Australia called Optus. Their motto is yes. Believe it or not, it's been yes since the day they started some... It must be over 20 years now they've been here in Australia. Competition to our major telco here, Telecom, who I personally loathe. We'll get into that another time. Fairly basic on the front. So we'll have a look at the front. You'll see we've got some I.O. here. We've got a USB 3.0 port, WPS button, and a Wi-Fi button, hard on and off. Now, I've never known why they've done this. Um, personally, for me, I prefer to administer the Wi-Fi through the web interface of this so that there's no mistaking knocking your Wi-Fi on and off. Uh, it'll be interesting to see that whether they've got a button lock for that. I know some providers, you can actually lock that button out from within the web interface so that there's no risk of actually knocking it and turning off the Wi-Fi. On the top, we have a power button, a DSL indicator, a fibre link. Now, obviously, FCOE, fibre channel over Ethernet. Internet available, phone alert, WPS, and Wi-Fi on or off indicator. On the back, we have a DSL input, two phone I.O., reset button, another USB 3 port, quad Ethernet, fiber input, power, and a hard power switch. So let's go into the web interface and have a look around the unit. So here we are in the web interface, standard IP address for modems um pretty much 192.168.01 you'll see we have a number of uh settings some quick links down the bottom the optus yes logo up the top optus wi-fi modem you'll see it's not connected so no internet connection you'll see here with the my network And that's uh, VoIP. Oh, it is VoIP enabled. So it's a VoIP modem as well. Going to the setup and configuration, you'll see there you've got all your device info, um, your login details, your Wi-Fi setup. Let's see whether or not we can disable that button. So you'll see there we've got to, well, we do have to do a hard reset on this modem before we can do anything. I think we'll be doing that. They've left their settings in their modem. When you are picking up tech from a garage sale, you always need to check before you start modifying it for yourself for two things. One, whether their personal details are still stored on the unit, or two, whether they've reset the unit correctly. And in this case, they haven't. If we go into the advanced settings, you'll see it comes up with the Sagem interface, obviously from the onboard ROM. You'll see there we have our device info, setup, wireless, multimedia, diagnostics, management, return to basic menu. There's the details for it. You'll see we have our up and down speeds. You've got your primary DNS, your gateways, all that. And then up the top, you can see there it, you'll have your DSL up and down speeds. You can refresh the page, reboot it. If we go into, say, the advanced setup, <coughs> you see there you can change everything. <coughs> Go into the LAN setup, and you've got your network access translation, your UPnP, your diagnostics. There are some of your diagnostics. And then your, your management, where you can access control, reboot the modem, all that type of stuff. Pretty good little modem, actually. It'd be interesting to see whether or not it can run on a different connection. I highly doubt it. But I will be hanging on to this modem because I'm hopefully, where I move to at the end of this year, will be able to get this mob, Optus. I love Optus. Um, years ago, I had them, and they were great. Their ADSL2 was tremendous. 22 megabit down and nearly 5 megabit up. I wasn't complaining. Anyway, that's a look at the Optus modem.
and that's uh, that's the end of this uh, this part of the garage sale playlist. And as I said, every time I pick up a bit of tech from a garage sale, I'll put a put a profile up, and and we can have a look at it. Anyway, thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe.